Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and over on Facebook at Me Crafty Scrapper Creates. And welcome back to my channel. If you're not a subscriber here, I would love for you to be. Just um, click that subscribe button and the little bell to get a notification every time I put up a new video. And today is an episode of M Scrapbusters where it's weekly. I help you to try to um, use up scraps that you have and um, that way you don't have to be throwing away a bunch of stuff. You can just use up all those scraps. And I have lots and lots and lots of ideas and then some ideas I get from people on uh, YouTube. But um, if I ever get an idea, a specific idea from someone on YouTube, I am definitely going to tell you where I got that idea from. But um, as you all know, scrap, paper scrap, paper crafting and scrapping, um, there's nothing really original in it. Somebody years and years and years and years ago thought of the idea and um, we're all just kind of working building on that one original idea anyway today i got an idea from the little book rings that we got in the e-club kit i got this idea and i thought hmm i can use these book rings and i can make um scrap or um, collaged swatches and they can just be a base they don't have to have lots of focal point or lots of uh, layers yet they can just be a base you can use up some scraps and they can be tag shaped or they can just be square like journal shape but all of them will have a hole at the top so that they can all be put on a jump ring these jump rings you can build them up as fat as you need to the jump rings can be stored on hooks on the wall if we want to and that way we can have it right at eyesight and um, we can pick one off and use it in a project a journal scrapbook page whatever add some um, lace or trim to the top and you've got it add like a little focal point or a word phrase you've got it ready for your journal and so I have a lot of digital scraps and I thought these would be very, very pretty on some of these. So I'm going to use some book page today. That's what I used on the background of that one. I'm going to use some book page and some digital scraps and other scraps that I have in my scrap bowl. Start making some cluster swatches. Now I'm starting with cardstock base. I have lots and lots of cardstock to use up. You might not have that, so you just use whatever you want to as your base. But this is what I'm using for the base of mine is cardstock. I have so much 12 by 12 and 8.5 by 11 cardstock. It is not even funny how much I have. I like that just as is an ink around it that'll be one already complete for our jump ring there um, let's do another little piece of something at the top maybe I like that let's tear it on both ends so yeah we're just making up some bases to go into our projects now this these can be used as little tuck spots they can be used as journal cards tags whatever you want them to be used for in your projects but just another little piece of decoration and then I'm going to trim this off like that and we can have that another piece for another one I like that let's add one other little piece of something it needs just a little extra something on there doesn't it and like I said these are mostly a base 
Oh yeah, I like that. Um, so we don't have to add any kind of major focal point. We can just have these at the ready for our next project. And then we can add more on later. So then I'm going to use the small hole punch on my crop it all. And then add that to my jump ring. Just got to get it apart. And then put that together. So there we've got two. And then this one, I'm not even going to ink. I'm just going to glue this down. And this one's super easy, super simple. Little cluster swatch. I just love the versatility of clusters, especially large clusters like this, because you can add them and use them in all sorts of ways. Okay, let's go ahead and punch that one and get that added on. I guess I could keep my jump ring open. I don't have to close it every time since I'm adding to it so much right now, huh? And then later, if we wanted to, we could make the hole bigger to put more trim in or whatever. So, see, we're already making like a little tag booklet, but this is just for um, base cluster reasons. I love that. Now, this green, I want to cover up quite a bit of that. Um, I've got some of this. Is beautiful and it's got some green in it so I mean I could see just showing the edge there but let's go ahead and get that cut and we can add that there but yeah I saw those little book rings in the e-club kit and even though I ordered them and I knew that they were going to be in the e-club kit, I was like, ooh, I've got extra ideas for that. Very cute. And let's use that up. Okay, I've got, I've got more. But if I tear it down the middle... Let's see if that'll work, because I know it wasn't even. Oh yeah, that works. Okay, and let's cut it off there. Since they're clusters, the little things, I'm not worried about getting them cut exactly perfect. Y'all hear little Lila? Rose down here chomping on her kibble right at my feet. Oh, and then somebody come through the door and she decided she's got to ferociously bark at them. And then I think I'll put just that little piece of book page, maybe the other side of it, right there to give us a little bit of visual interest, but it doesn't have to be anything major and then let's go ahead and ink around this i didn't even ink that one at all you can if you want to or you can wait and see what distress ink you have used in your project and then just ink it later with that ink okay and put that on there so it's kind of like having um, paint swatches. These are just cluster swatches for you to use later on, building up our stash of clusters and such. So we've already got four nice ones on there that can be used for all kinds of projects. I love these simple no-brainer scrap busting projects. They help me out so much when I need a no-brainer project. <laughs> and clusters are just really no-brainers for me. OK, 
Okay, and we'll put that on there. And that piece there, love it just like it is. But let's go ahead and ink this wonky looking piece of torn book page. Ink it up, or ink it up, glue it with my Barely Art glue that I have in my Sugar Bell bottle. It kind of looks like a seal. There's his nose. He's pointing up. Here's his tail. <laughs> and I need to clean my desk mat again because it's getting to that point where things are liking to stick to it because it's got so much glue residue on it. Okay. Get it where it's not looking like so much like a seal anymore. I don't have much need for seal related items in my journals, do y'all? <laughs> uh, maybe a little piece of this, just a little torn strip of it, maybe. I like that. We'll ink that. Now see on some of them I'm inking every piece and then some of them I didn't ink at all. It's just whatever you want to do. Y'all I have got to tell you I went to a local plant shop and they had some of the prettiest stuff. The older I get the more I like plants. I don't know what that whole deal is. Just seeing stuff grow and it flourish because you're tending to it, I guess, is the whole allure to that. You know, we've raised our babies and they don't really need us every single day for every single thing. And I guess that's what that is. You need something to nurture. <laughs> So yeah, it's called The Man Cave. That's the name of this place. And they have some of the cutest things. They're, they have all kinds of crazy looking um, planters and stuff. Just a really cool little shop. Okay, I think I'm going to cover this one completely and I'll just cut off the excess. But I got me, um, I had a planter that was sad looking as far as the plants that were in it. We had had some really hard rain. And it got put up underneath a downspout. And I mean, it was like the plants in it were gone. They were dead because they had just been waterlogged and beat up. So I went ahead and cleaned that out and got me a begonia and um, a nice little um, maiden hair fern. I think that was the name of it. And then some creeping, creeping genie or Goldilocks plant that, you know, kind of spreads. It's like ground cover. And so it's hanging off the edge of the planter. So pretty. Um, if I can remember, I'll put you a picture of it right here. Because I did take a picture of it. It was so cute. And the people there are so knowledgeable. They can help you with anything. That's one of the other reasons I like going. Because I'm not the best at picking out plants. Especially easy plants. So they're really good about helping with that. I think I'm going to tear me off some of this. This is some um, paper from a pharmacy bag, like a vintage looking pharmacy bag. I like that. Let's put that all down through here on this edge. Get off the excess in a minute once that gets dry. And we can ink. 
around the edges and leave that as is. We can cover up the back later on if we want to. So I got that and I had a little succulent that had died, died out, run its course in a planter that I have in the kitchen. And so I got another little hen and chick kind of succulent to go in that pot. But yeah, I'm totally the plant nerd this year for whatever reason. It's just something calming. Brings me a little bit of joy, so decided to go with it. I just hope that they don't suffer because <laughs> we're gone quite a bit. Um, but I do have neighbors that are real good about helping out if we need it. Um, let's maybe go for this large one. That'll be a really big one to put on there. And then a wide one. Yeah, let's do that. Look at all these we've already got. Two, three, four, five, six of them already. See, these are real, these go by really quick. Just don't think about what you're putting on there. Just do it. Don't worry about it. And um, that is one of the biggest reasons that people just don't even do any kind of paper crafting is they think about it too long and decide, oh, that wouldn't look right. If you want to know the entire truth of it, that is why a lot of my videos don't get done. It's because I think about it and I think, oh, I'd like to do that. But then I think, mm, nobody else wants to see me do that. And so then I don't do the video and I miss out on what could have been something really, really good because I had my doubts that you all wouldn't like it or wouldn't watch it. So I just don't do it. Isn't that sad? That's very sad. Just do the things. People are either going to watch it or they're not. And that's totally up to them. Okay, let's cut this down. This is a piece of leftover Coco Daisy paper. I'm just cutting my hand. If you've got a little trimmer, go ahead and get it and trim up everything if you want to. I'm not worrying about that. Okay, and then get glue on that. Add it on and add this other little piece here. It's almost a perfect little square. Like that, you can still see bloom there. Okay. And get this added here. I love that. I love that. Too stinking cute. I've got this little tab that's already cut. That would look adorable on the edge of that. Well, let's get some paper of some kind to put on there. That looks like it was made for that background, in my humble opinion. Let's do both of those. And maybe have that hanging off. Let's do a tear at the top of this one. I 
and ink those. I want to thank all y'all for the response that y'all gave me with the last video. I had been on a little hiatus. And then I asked y'all to help out Miss Tina over at Shabby Dabby Doodah because she really needs it. And y'all answered the call on that too, I have heard. So thank you so much. I love it when the YouTube community comes together and helps out those who need it. Let's go ahead and add this on here and I think I'm going to staple it on just because cute and I mean more stuff can be added to this later resist the urge to decorate it completely. You don't have to do that at this point. This is also a great project for when um, your creative mind is just on the blink and just start adding scraps to cardstock bases and you don't have to have um, your creation sparks going all at once. You can just do what you can. And leave the rest for another day. That has been a big thing for me lately. Just with all that's been going on. I like that. We can just make it a little mat of sorts. But sometimes you just don't have it in you to do a complete full project so that's where scrap busters come in very handy and I hope that I help y'all with that a good bit every week this is I think M scrap busters number 101 y'all we've been doing this for a long time and I enjoy it. Like I said, sometimes you just need a no-brainer project. And most all, oh, I'll use that next. That's beautiful. Most all of my scrap busters are no-brainers. That is for sure. But it's just how I like it. I like that. Let's go ahead and trim this off on the bottom and get that put on there. Bethany is doing so good with college, y'all. She loves cosmetology. Loves it. And she gets to be independent, which is another thing I love to see for her because she's always been a very... Um, kind of stay at home, don't want to do too much, you know, get too far away from the house kind of kid. And I don't like that she has to drive an hour one way to get her independence, but right now that's just the hand we've been dealt. But she's really, really enjoying it. When she leaves college, she calls me every day when she's leaving and tells me what they did that day, what they worked on, what test they did, what she made on that test. She's just very, very excited about cosmetology. And it is, it's really something that her dad and I were surprised by <laughs> because she's never been that um, frou-frou type of child that just really wanted to dress up all the time and she never did really do the whole dress up thing either <laughs> so this has been um eye opening for us potential spam and um 
we were like, oh wow, she really, she really likes that. It's not something we thought that she would go after, but she does. She really loves it. Okay, so look here, y'all. Look at them. How cute. Kind of fan them out here for you. We've got so many done in so little time. So these small little Tim Holtz book rings can hold comfortably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine-ish of these. Okay, so this is something that I could hang on a hook. I've got a wall of hooks in front of me there. And I could hang those up very easily and they're right at eye level and I could go, oh, okay, yeah, I could add a rose die cut to that and a little word phrase and it's ready for a page in a journal. You know? Too cute. I've got two more of these. We probably don't have time to fill up all of them, but I really want to use this paper. This is some of that digital paper that I got from um, Rachel and Bella Crafts on that last collaboration we did. So pretty. And I think on this next ring of them, I'm just going to do a simple one little strip on the cardstock. So we don't even have to do a full cluster of, you know, layers. Let's just do one little strip here. Okay, so there's one. Let's get another of those beautiful digitals from Rachel and Bella. Oh, look at that. How pretty. That clock. That is super duper pretty. I'm just going to put the glue on my base. And put it on that way. Oh, I like that. And it's super simple. Turn it over, cut off the excess. So there's another. Let's go for a short one or a shorter one. You can maybe do two little strips on this one. There we go. That works. And see, we don't have to ink anything if we don't want to right now. We can do that in final stages. I just thought it was a really cute idea to do, put them on the book rings. That just gives me yet another thing to do with book rings. I love using those, especially for tag books and things. Um, let's get, I think I've got four or five more strips of Rachel and Bella digitals, maybe. So let's use those up. Oh, here we go. Here's some more of them. Uh, and these? No, that's it. Okay. So there's three with just the little strips on them. That's cute. Go ahead and put that on there. And cut off the excess in a minute. And look at this, how pretty. I bet it would be very pretty up against this green. I have some sticky on this one side, so I think I'll use that up. There is my Bethany Girl home. My app alerts me. Put that on like that. And cut that excess off. So say look how no-brainer this is, y'all. Your projects that you start do not have to be full-fledged, 
all complete stuff. You can just make some bases to use later. Ooh, look at that one, how pretty. I think that's upside down in it. Yep. Oh, I like that on there. It's kind of matchy matchy, but I love it. And just put the glue wherever you want it and smack it down. See, the wording's this way, and then that's the other way, so just have to figure out later which way we want to use it. That's very cute, and we could just kind of mat that one like so, and add a die cut or a word label later on. And wow, that's too tiny to save Melina. Throw it out. It's okay. Okay, these are more on the plain Jane side, so I'm going to put those off to the side and maybe get two more completed. Let's go this side. I'm always going to the right side when I'm putting strips on there. And I'm thinking I'm going to put that on there just to have something a little more wild on there. Or should I just do that? Oh, I like that. Let's do that. Cute. And then maybe that and that. That's cute. We do it this way so we can still see the words and put this on the plainer side. I like that. Now, after I do this, I'll have two more, and I might as well find two more strips of something to use that up. I would hate to have just two bases with nothing on them just sitting here. When I could have used them. Okay, that. Cut that excess off, and then we will get these added on to one of those book rings. How many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Mm, we'll see if they'll fit on there. If not, we'll just put the last two on one by itself. That's pretty. Let's do a line and then a kind of jaggedy jag. And get that on there. Which these don't have as much on them as that first ring did. So maybe they'll all fit on there. We shall see. Let's do a little like that just as is put it on the middle and let's ink it so brand new way of just getting your bases covered <laughs> literally and using up scraps in the process how fun is that and then you could always uh, trim them tag shape if you wanted to and let's go ahead and get our holes punched on these. And then I put them on smallest to largest just so that you can get the full effect and you can see all of them. That one looks like it's got fabric on it, the way that paper frayed. This one's super simple. That just means we can add lots and lots and lots to it whenever we get around to using it. Okay, so let's line them up, get our book ring apart. When we 
pull it apart for the very first time, that's like the hardest time. After that, it comes apart rather easily, but that first time, it's just been with the manufacturer the way it was put together and it is not that one has not come apart I'll have to get a tool a hold to that one all right so here's this one apart and probably this is going to be one of my larger ones I'm just kind of line them up and see so I think I'll do that and that and then this and this one is two of my smaller ones these are pretty long which it really does not matter if you get them on they're all smallest to biggest but just helps you to see everything Okay. And then tag shape is so pretty. That one is so pretty. I love that digital piece I had left over. Okay. Oh, yeah. Those fit. And Bethany got the other one open for me. <laughs> All right, so lots and lots and lots of bases. Collage swatch bases done in this video. Look at all of them, y'all. Let me put this away. Ready for a die cut and some ink and maybe a word phrase. And then added to our journals. Too sweet and super duper easy. I think I want to rearrange that just because it's tiny. And let's get that right there to the front. And kind of separate those two tag shapes with that one. And then get that on there. Yeah. Better. All right. So if you make some collage swatches, I want to see them and even see how you're going to store them. Um, because these would be so cute hanging on the wall and waiting for your next project. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Bye, y'all.